By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Michael, a player from Denmark, and he's bringing a deck to the table that he has called Howl from Paradise. Pretty cool name, right? And it actually has all the colors in it. So I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action. And I'm bringing my Mahamoti ramp deck to the table. It's uh, blue and it's green, and I just want to play a lot of Mahamoti Jins. That's just that's my battle plan. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, before I go to the actual games, I'm first going to do a little bit of deck tech. Now, if you want to go to the games uh, straight away, no worries. Check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. Click on the timestamp, and, and it'll take you straight to game number one. Now here I'm going to start by looking at the deck starting with Michael's Howl from Paradise. And here we see the deck of Michael Howl from Paradise and as you can see it's named after that one lonely Howl from Beyond and I really love that include. I think it's really cool. Um, maybe, you know what, maybe uh, Michael you're gonna win a game or two with the Howl from Beyond. It would be really sweet. Of course it makes a nice combination with those two Berserks right underneath it and if we look at the rest of the deck um i can just i would just like to point out that michael is a starting old school player so his collection is somewhat limited on the other hand he has all those beautiful dual lands so that's a great start for any collection and uh, he's decided to go with these uh, this multicolored deck all the five colors i believe are represented here very interesting to see that one lonely copy artifact Obviously, it can be very useful because he's playing with uh, those three Felwer Stones, Soul Ring. And he's got one piece of power. We can see that there it is, the green mox. So he can he can copy that one. And also, of course, he can copy the Mishra's Factory. So I guess there are enough targets for him to copy. And maybe he's thinking that with the Felwer Stones and the Birds of Paradise and the Four City of Brasses, he'll have enough, um, you know, different color mana sources to kind of pull one blue card off. Um, I think the same thing counts for black. If you look at his black cards, you see Howl from Beyond. And then, of course, the auto includes uh, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And again, he doesn't have a lot of black sources, but it's probably enough having the three birds and having the Felwer Stones, um, you know, and of course the City of Brass is the full playset, so that could probably work. And I guess um, he's playing today against, against me, against a player who's not playing with any direct removal in his deck so he's lucky in that sense that he doesn't have to worry for me to for example bolt his bird so when he plays the birds of paradise he will have the mana from the birds of paradise i think that's a great advantage for him in this particular matchup if we look at the rest of the deck uh we see and i, I think maybe it's, it's it's just good to say this because uh, i know that old school is not a budget friendly format on the other hand there are a lot of cards in old school that are very powerful and actually very very cheap and affordable and i think that whole role with the lightning bolt swords to plowshares and disenchants really illustrates that well these are huge important cards in old school magic they're extremely strong if you're playing white and red you probably play with end sword to plowshares and with lightning bolt I always find that fantastic because, you know, a lot of old school decks still want to win through combat damage. So if you have your swords and you have your bolt, you just have so many ways to get rid of creatures. I especially love to play with those two cards when I'm facing a black mage, knowing that there's always this chance of Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Specter. And just knowing that I'm playing with a deck that has, you know, in this case, seven answers to that, but sometimes even eight cards in it. It's, it's just very comforting, I must say. And also the disenchants in old school, crazy good. You've got options. You can do artifact, but you can also do enchantment and you don't have to pay any extra cost for that. It's just two mana and you can choose whatever you want to get rid of. So that makes it really strong. Uh, when we look at the rest of the deck, when I look at the creature base, there are a few things that I find interesting. He's playing with a full playset of Argovian Pixies. Argovian Pixies, very strong in the Swedish meta because of all the Mistress factories, because of just a one-off strip mine. And of course, because the Suchi sees a lot of play in Swedish as well. So that makes Argovian Pixies very strong here. Interesting that he's playing with four of those. And for, for example, not with four Urnum Jins. So he's just playing with two Urnum Jins and two Sarah Angels. I think if I'm trying to, to think the reasoning behind this is that Michael, when constructing this deck, thought, okay, I just want to have four big bombs. And of course, with two Sarahs and two Urnums, you basically have four bigger beefy creatures in your deck i think i would maybe add another urn of gin uh to this just because it's such a powerful creature and maybe take an argovian pixies away i don't know or maybe tinker it a little bit different but anyway um it is understandable and yeah it looks it looks interesting here and of course he, he's also playing with two berserks so i mean he, he does need some creatures 
with power to kind of double them up. So at first glance, I would consider adding another Urnum in this brew. Um, also interesting here is the one Icy Manipulator. I'm really a big Icy fan because it's such a flexible and versatile card. Interesting that he's included a one of. I think um, I think it can be a big benefit actually in certain uh, board states, definitely here for Michael. So overall, interesting deck. Uh, a little bit of everything in this brew from Michael Howe from Paradise. Uh, let's take a look at the deck that I'm bringing to the table today. And here we see my deck Mahamoti Ramp. So I'm playing with two colors today, with blue and with green. And um, I actually decided not to include any dual lands. So there are no tropical islands in here. I just thought, you know what, let's cut the duels, kind of go more, I guess, in a budget way because it's got no dual lands. Um, and uh, But I just, I just want to try it out. And just to give you some insight on the land base, I'm actually playing with uh, 12 forests and 10 islands. And then I've also included, of course, four Birds of Paradise that can give me any color of mana. And to add even more ramp, I also chose to go with a full playset of Llanowar Elves. So what I'd like to do with this deck is to at least in turn one have a Llanowar Elf or a Birds of Paradise in my hand, play them out, and then in turn two be able to play one of my uh, three casting cost spells. So I've got four uh, Timmies there, you know, the Altered Tim the Enchanter, uh, protocol sorcerers so i'm hoping to play out a timmy maybe turn two or an ice storm turn two those are my two options that's what i'm really going for if i cannot do that then i'm probably going to hold up one of my counter spells so my power sink or my spell blast so i've not choose uh, chose i did not choose sorry <laughs> for the traditional double blue counter spell because of the mana situation so i figured out I always want to be able to counter it, so instead I'm going for a Power Sync, which is just one blue and X, or a Spell Blast, which is also just one blue and X. Yeah, and then in turn four, I'm hoping to ramp a little bit more, but if I can, hopefully I can then deploy a book, or I can uh, get control of the game with an Icy Manipulator, or, you know, I can have a Control Magic, or I can have a Psy Blast. So, the, obviously, I'm hoping in turn four, if everything works with me, that I'll be able to to play out a Mahamoti Jin. Of course, that's a dream. I'm playing with a full playset of Mahamoti Jins. I want to play out Mahamoti Jins. I'm also playing with one single Berserk just to, just to have that surprise effect. I always find that when I play with more Berserks, but that could also be me as just being a poor Berserk player because I know I am because usually I can't really make it work. But when I play with multiple Berserks, there are often just so many situation, situations where I feel forced to use the Berserk too early in the game, or I have a Berserk and a, no, not the right creature, or I'm using the Berserk defense, defensively, which which in certain circumstances can be great, but it's not really your intention when you're playing with Berserks, right? Usually it's not. Anyway, um, so there's a single Berserk in here. Of course, I'm playing with the Brain Guys. They're hoping to ref refill my hand a little bit if I ramp out too quickly, but I think the greatest threat for me in this matchup against Michael is... Am I going to keep my ramp alive? Am I going to keep my ramp alive? I played against a white and a red deck earlier in Atok Brew. And I mean, that player just demolished my mana base. It just killed my creatures. So I'm just going to see how, how it's going to work out. But if Michael's able to really quickly, because he's playing with bolts and with swords, if he's able to really quickly kill my Llanowars and kill my birds, it's going to be a really rough game for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's not going to happen. And if it's going to happen, maybe I need to go back to the board and like rethink the strategy of this deck. But hey, you know, hopefully my mana dorks can stay alive. I can play out my creatures. Maybe I can actually use my Timmy's to ping down his uh, birds and his Argovian pixie. So maybe my Timmy can actually, I'm just thinking this now, maybe my Timmy can be quite strong in this particular matchup. Okay, enough enough rambling on about uh, about my brew. Let's just go to the games and 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 find out who's who's going to win this one. So we've got Michael with Howl from Paradise facing my Mahamoti Ram deck. Let's go to the games. Game number 1 is about to begin and we have Michael on the play sitting on the left. And maybe an interesting side note here is that he's actually playing from his summer house in Norway. He's now sitting outside on a picnic bench in the beautiful Norwegian nature. So you can understand I was kind of jealous when he when he told that to me. Uh, casting a Savannah now. And I'm starting with a basic forest passing turn. Not a mana dork. I'm a little bit surprised because I think I should just take a mulligan if I don't have a turn one play with this particular deck. And here he's playing an Argovian Pixies, turn number two. And there I go, playing an Island. 
Let's see what Michael can do here. I can counter now, of course, with that blue mana if I have a Power Sync or Spell Blast in hand. And let's see what he can do. And, ooh, a Strip Mine on my blue source. I think this is a good decision here from Michael and could be a little bit problematic. At least I'm finding a lot of our Elves and there's not a second land drop. Some very light on lands here. I, I really wonder why I kept this hand, to be honest. Very good Lightning Bolt here by Michael, taking care of my mana base. Of course, seeing that I missed that land drop and he's playing dual land number three. Luckily for me, not playing another threat. And I'm casting my second forest. That does mean that I cannot counter right now. So he can just cast whatever he wants to. And let's see what else he can do. Playing his City of Brass. He's got four mana now, so he could play an Urnum. But instead we see a Birds of Paradise swinging in for two more. Going to 14 here. Can I find a blue source? Maybe play a Protocol Sorcerer playing a Timmy. Yes, there we see a Timmy. Hopefully it can survive because then it can start pinging down his army. Starting with the Argovian Pixies, I guess. Because it already has given me six damage in total. So hopefully it can stay alive. Let's see what Michael can do. Is he tapping that for red? Oh, he's tapping it for white swords to Plowseers. Ay, 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 ay. That means I'm going to 15, but I'm losing... My precious creature here, tapping four, and there we see a book. At least not an Urnum, it could have been worse for me. But I'm already on 13, I really need to do something, and the Lanowar Elves is not going to cut it for me. Pretty low on mana as well in this game. And it looks like Michael is, uh, is walking away with this game. Of course, I'm still on 13. I still have some options. But I need to start drawing into land first. That's the first thing I need to do. I Things just gotten a lot worse for me with that Sarah Angel. But there is a power sink. At least I'm able to power sink it. He has to tap a City of Brass, taking a damage. Or actually, I yeah, I can power sink it. I thought, don't I have enough mana? And I don't, I don't have enough mana. I don't have enough land. Oh, wow. My Lanaware Elf still has Summoning Sickness. Oh, man. That means, oh, man. I mean, at least if the Power Sync could have worked, I could have, it could have bought me some time. And again, I don't have a land drop here. Remember, I'm playing with four Mahamoti Jins. That's six lands that I need. I only have got four. I mean, he's going to hit me for six here, dropping me to five. I'm not sure why he's tapping the angel, though, but at least, okay, at least I've got one block here with the giant grove being able to block the Argovian pixie. So the Argovian pixie dies, but we still have that Seraph flying through the air. If only the power sink would have worked, I would have kind of stabilized, I guess. And he still has that book, of course, that he can use. Uh, I guess we kind of were replaying a play here. And he's tapping two. No, he's not tapping two. He's just passing turn. Okay. And playing another force. At least I'm finding some mana, but maybe it's too little too late. Now, end of turn, of course, he's going to draw a card with his uh, JM Day Tome. So he's got the bigger creature. He's got card advantage now as well. I mean, I need to do something against it, Sarah, first. I'm on five. If next turn I can find a second blue source, hopefully play Ma Mahamoti. I oh, there is a spell blast. Okay, I, I stay. I can stay alive one more turn. I can do this. I know I'm pretty much dead, but still I can do this. There is hope still. Okay, draw into blue. Draw into blue. Cast Mahamoti Jin. I finding even more forests. This is just a little bit ridiculous. I am finding an ice storm, which is pretty nice, I guess. Against the uh, Mishra's Factory, at least taking care of one creature and casting another Ice Storm. It's just a little bit too little, too late. Uh, showing him my Mahamoti Jin, but I wasn't able to play it. And I guess here we can see a little bit of a weakness when you're not playing with dual lands. Um, and in all honesty, I think I shouldn't have kept kept my hand because I, I didn't have a Mana Dork turn one. I only had two lands in an opener, I think a forest and a, and a basic island. So. 
that wasn't great. And I think I have to also give credits to Michael. I think what Michael did really well is, you know, obviously drawing into that strip mine, but also using that strip mine, not waiting for any special land that may appear. No, just go and attack, you know, go attack color. He chose blue. It's a good decision. And then he played his bolt on the on the Lanawar. And that really put me in a tight spot because he was able to deal, I don't know, eight, maybe even 10 damage just with one Argovian pixie. So, I mean, that, that was great magic here. So we are going to our sideboards. And we'll catch up with you in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. It's one up here for Michael. That means that I'm on the play. Look at that. I've taken a mulligan. So, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, finding a soul ring. That's good. I've got some ramp. Um, you know, hopefully I can have some more luck this uh, this time around. And uh, I, this was this was funny. I kept saying to Michael, Michael, I can see your hand. You know, you got you to gotta put it away a little bit more. Uh, playing a beautiful taiga there. Um, playing an island, so that's pretty good, but not finding a um, spell to play to cast here turn th turn two. Maybe, oh, again, strip mine. I want to say maybe I'm keeping a counter spell in hand just to counter like his Argovian pixies or something, but again, that strip mine, that strip mine is going to give me nightmares because again, I'm losing my only blue source. And there he is playing out a Felwer Stone. Finding an Icy. Okay, that's not too bad. But, I mean, look at my mana base. And then in his upkeep, I'm tapping one of his lands down. Uh, what I wanted to say is look at my mana base. Again, I have no blue. And uh, let's see let's see what Michael can do. He's got two lands, but the Felwer Stone is only making green mana for him. So that's not ideal for him either. Finding a Plateau here, adding white to his arsenal. Will we see a disenchant perhaps? I guess not tapping to another Argovian Pixies. At least I can start tapping it down. Finding an island here. Can I play a Protocol Sorcerer? Because that is a really good weapon against that Argovian Pixie. I guess I can. Just passing turn here. But it's great for me that I finally found a blue source again. And look at that, I have six mana right now, but I just don't have the double blue to cast the Mahamoti Jin. And there we see another Taiga yet, so almost a full placement of Taigas here on the table from Michael. And he's got five land as well. Tapping the Argovian Pixies, curious to see what he's going to do. Will we see an Urnum Jin, for example? And he's tapping two here, is he tap? No, he's tapping three. And playing an Ice Storm. Oh no! And there's no counter spell. In response, I'm playing a Psyblast at least on the Pixies, but no counter spell to save my island. Oh man, and that's bad news for me here. And he's tapping to another Argovian Pixies. And it looks like Michael has the answers at the right time, and uh, I really need to add some islands, I guess. And interesting here, I'm tapping his plateau, so I'm worried about a possible disenchant, I guess, and I'm willing to take two damage because I'm still on 18, I'm still pretty high up, so I can take a hit for two, and I just want to cancel out that color here for Michael. Um, I'm tapping here, going to find, hopefully find something. I guess I'm not, and this time around I'm not tapping the plateau, so I guess Michael can untap the pixies. Probably going to tap the Pixies or the Factory when he wants to attack. But of course, I'm first going to wait until he animates the Factory and then says I want to go to my attack step so I can respond here. Is he going to play a Disenchant? Ah, oh, this is brutal. This is what I was afraid of. But there's just not much that I can do. I could choose to take 4 damage, drop to 12, but I just thought that wasn't, wasn't really a good option for me. Um, and of course he's going to hit me with his factory, going to drop to 14. I really need to, to draw into something. And, uh, wow. And the regrowth over disenchant, probably going to cast it or maybe on my soul ring next turn. Of course, depending on what I'm going to play out again, finding an Island. Um, the problem of course is now that I've tapped down the Island, I cannot counter anymore. Um, but hey, I wanted to play the Timmy. It can take care of the Argovian Pixies if it can stick. Because remember, I'm playing against a deck with bolts. I think I even saw a bolt there in Michael's hand. Oh, no. 
Well done, Michael. Well played. He's got full control here. Hitting me for four, but that's not even the worst thing. The worst thing here is that I just cannot get any control over the board. And, okay, at least finding another Timmy. Of course, I'm playing with a full play set here. And, I mean, Timmy should be kind of okay against a deck with four Argovian Pixies and Birds of Paradise, but it's not really showing its value yet. And a Swords to Plowsier. It's going to 11, but losing my Protocol Sorcerer. And here we can see really the strength of playing the colors red and the color white. You just have so many ways of dealing with creature threats that you don't really have to choose. And tapping a control magic here, or sorry, playing a control magic here, tapping my blue blue lance, that's what I was, uh, what I wanted to say here. Taking over the Argovian Pixies. If I can't kill it, you know what? Just take it over then. Again, um, not an ideal situation. Kind of feel forced into this. I just don't want to take a hit for four more. There we see a book, probably going to hit me for two, dropping to five here. And I just need to, to cast a Maamoti, so I guess the Argovian Pixies is going to untap. Again, finding um, a Protocol Sorcerer here. So this is Timmy number three. Hopefully it can finally stick. Although it's not as valuable at, at the moment, because there's nothing for me to ping on the side of Michael's uh, board. And he's, he's got the Jam Day Tome, so he can start drawing cards as well if he has nothing in hand. So I wonder what he's going to do next. He's just passing turns. So I guess that's good news for me. Finding another island. So I can't complain about the islands this, this game. Drawing another card and step, of course. And at least I have my Timmy online, but it's again not looking great for me. I really need a Maomoti Jin. That could help. I have the mana to cast it. And can Michael actually find a bigger creature? I guess he's now really looking for a second white source to maybe play out his Sarah Angel if he has it. Or he's looking for his Urnum Jin. But it's not too bad of a situation for him. Lightning Bolt. And there is a red element or a blue elemental blast uh, coming from my sideboard, of course, taking care of at least one. A lightning bolt. And is he going to cast another one? And he's... Oh, disenchant. Taking back his pixies. Of course I'm going to ping it. He knows that, but... What else can I do? So he's actually attacking. And I'm telling him he can't attack because it's got summoning sickness again. And uh, I'm going to ping at end of turn. I'm on three life here. It's looking very dire for me again. Um, finding a book. Maybe I can draw into a Maamoti then. Let's see. And let's see if, you know, of course, Michael's still looking for like a bigger creature. Finding a City of Breast. At least he's got two white now. So if he has a Sarah, he can start casting it. Attacking first, blocking and pinging it. I just don't want to take any more damage. That means I'm still on three. I took care of his factory, but I lost my Protocol Sorcerer. Uh, and look at that. Is he actually going to cast? Oh, he's going to cast Sarah Angel. So he's, he, he takes a damage from the City of Brass. Going to drop to 19. What I need here is or a Psyblast, because I'm still on three. I can play it. Or a Maamoti. I guess I haven't found the Maamoti using my Jam Day Tome to draw into something. Maybe I have a Psyblast. It's, it's, it's an instant. And attacking here. And no, oh, I've got a forest. No, oh, that's it. Aye, aye, aye. So Michael... Oh, and we see a howl from beyond. Michael, congratulations, man, on this victory. 2-0 for you. Uh, but for everybody watching, stick around because we did play game number three. So if you want to see game number three, stick around um, for that, you know. Uh, but first of all, Michael, congratulations. You played very well. Um, and for now, let's go to game number three and, and see if I can at least cast a Maamoti Jin. Game number three. So uh, Michael's already won, just to clarify that. <laughs> Two really nice games. Well played, Michael. Um, and uh, I'm, at least I get to start here for game number three. Let's see if I can uh, get some Maamotis on the battlefield. And there we go. So let's see, how's Michael going to open this one? And he's got a Mishra's Factory. Talking a little bit about the glare there. That Like the left top corner, there's a lot of glare on, on Michael's side. But 
you know, he's, he's got enough space. And passing turn here, playing island number two. Okay, so I guess I'm not really finding any green sources or attacking it for two with the second mistress factory. Does mean I can counter, but that's of course a good thing about lands, is that you cannot counter them. There we see a Pendlehaven, so I guess it's good news for me. And there we see a Birds of Paradise. So if it can stick to the board, I can start uh, getting my ramp on. Let's see what Michael can do here. Uh, casting a Plateau, that means he's got access to Lightning Bolt and to Swords to Plows here. So I'm getting pretty nervous here. Let's see what, what he's going to actually do. Is he going to swing in with his... He's going to play a Lightning Bolt, but I'm actually playing a Blue Elemental Blast. So those things are pretty solid against Lightning Bolts. And I'm going to drop here to 16 after taking another hit from the Factory. And there's another Birds of Paradise. And there it is, casting a Timmy at Protocol Sorcerer. And uh, let's see. There's not really anything on the board that I can ping. But still... It's a good feeling to cast, and also with that Pendlehaven, once it's untapped, I can use it to make my Protocol Sorcerer into a 2-3 creature. Which will not protect it from bolts, I guess, but it will make it possible to just block a factory. Although in this case, it wouldn't be a very wise decision, because he can still pump his factory with his other factory. But okay, we're not there yet. For now, the Pendlehaven's tapped, so it's not really up for discussion. And you saw a little glitch in the movie because there were some technical difficulties, but it's fixed now. And we can continue with this game number three. And let's see, so I'm pointing out, I believe, that my Birds of Paradise has Summoning Sickness, so that I cannot cast anything if I wanted to. So Michael doesn't have to worry about that. Um, I guess he's got a lot of options here. He's pretty much in the tank. And, oh, again, a strip mine. Oh, man. And I'm just, I'm facing strip mines every single game thus far. And there's also a stone ray. Wow, well done. Well done. It's always good when you can combine your single strip mine with land removal. The same thing goes, for example, when you have Chaos Orb early in the game and you can combine Chaos Orb with a land removal spell. It just makes it so much more powerful just being able to take out two lands at a time. And that really is a setback for me because remember, I'm playing with a full play set of Mahamotis. I want to ramp into my Mahamoti Jins, but by taking care of my land base, that's going to be pretty difficult even though I've drawn into all these Birds of Paradise. Look at that. There's a whole flock of them. I've got three Birds of Paradise there. But... um I'm a little bit stuck, but it looks like Michael's stuck on land too, by the way. I mean, he wasn't able to play a land drop the other turn, and now he's taking... Is he animating his factory or just... I guess he's just tapping it. He's not animating it for two. And is he going to play something? It looks like he's, he's a little bit in doubt here. Not sure. He doesn't want to run into... Playing a balance. Interesting. Taking, of course, care of all my Birds of Paradise. Can I counter this? No, I cannot. So all my Birds of Paradise are dead. Of course, I'm going to ping him for one of my Timmy, but all my Timmies are dead. Well, my one Timmy. The good news is here that Michael's also losing two lands, and he was already pretty light on lands, and he has to drop, um, or he has to discard, I should say, a lot of cards from his hand, because I only have three cards in hand. Very interesting, interesting balance here, because it is really hurting both of us. Look at that. Discarding a Demonic Tutor. Passing turn here. Oh, I'm top decking a Soul Ring. That's good news for me. Michael is not finding any land. Passing turn here. Able to play a Regrowth. What am I going to get back? An Island. Playing a single Island. Didn't have my land drop yet. That means I'm back to four mana. Ooh, and this could get problematic here for Michael. Finding a Jam Day Tome. And that means I can start drawing into land if I can't find them. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. Drawing a card, trying to find land, finding it, I guess. Playing another island. And look at how much mana I have. And look at Michael's board. 
And oh, well, we see a Mahamoti or Mahamoti Jin. And this balance is really backfiring here on Michael. He has to find land. He has to find it. He has to find a solution here to deal with the Mahamoti. And he's also facing that book. Things are looking very bad. And he has to discard his health from beyond. So this is what can happen sometimes. Another Mahamoti Jin. Crazy. 10 damage on the board. He's on 15. I think this is game because his only out would be a, a planes and another balance. But of course, balance is restricted. So he only plays with just one balance in the deck. He cannot play with more than that in, in Swedish old school magic. And I think in all old school magic rule sets. So at least he needs a white source and a source to take care of at least one Mahamoti. But he's not finding anything. He's forced to discard, smashing him here for 10 damage. And of course, this is the dream for my deck, playing a Timmy. But um, yeah, I just really think that balance backfired here on Michael. And that's it. That's game. So, hey, at least I was able to steal one of the three games. Um, and I have to say, Michael, a really interesting deck. Pretty cool. He also told me that he's going to DOS an old school tournament in Copenhagen, Denmark. I believe it's the 8th of August. So, Michael... A lot of luck in that tournament and I'm saying it right now but maybe this game uh, will actually air after you've played at DOS so I'm not really sure uh, when I will put this on the channel um, but thank you very much for this game and also thank you for your support by the way Michael on Patreon because he's one of my patrons um, he supports the show uh, Timmy Talks so thank you very much for that and thank you at home for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, um, you can do so by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Also sharing these vids on your socials. Everything really helps and it is much, much appreciated. Um, you can also support the channel uh, financially through Patreon. So you can become a patron already starting at one dollar a month so you can click on the card that's appearing right now you can click on there you can check out the patreon page of timmy talks and consider becoming a sponsor of the show talking about patreon talking about patrons let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the great fantastic beautiful awesome patrons of timmy talks Somebody can see.